Hey guys, welcome to the channel. One more closure video today. Uh, let's talk about uh, building REST APIs and uh, more specifically today about uh, the schemas. So we'll take a look into OpenAPI uh, 3 spec and uh, there are basically two different ways how you can approach that. Uh, the first one is the code first approach and the second one is API or contract first approach. So in this video, we'll take a look into the code first approach. It basically means that we'll write our specs uh, as part of our uh, service or application. Uh, so our uh, schemas and API definition inside our source code uh, will define our output uh, schema for the open API. Uh, and the other approach, we'll, which we'll discuss in the later videos, is the opposite, when you basically uh, write your uh, open API specs first uh, in JSON or YAML by using some tools like uh, uh, Swagger Editor or something like that. And after you defined your contract, uh, you have to build your APIs uh, following the, the, the contract. Uh, but yeah, as I said today, uh, we are going to use the code first approach and I'm going to use closure and uh, we will be basically having a simple ring a JT application. On top of that, we'll have a rated router, uh, router that's like a quite popular library in Clojure X system for building APIs. And they uh, have a support for open API uh, 3. Uh, as part of the library. So uh, this is our main application. Uh, this is our roots and we'll have two endpoints. One is for the Swagger JSON and one is for the OpenAPI JSON. And as you can see, uh, we use this OpenAPI namespace, which basically comes from rated.openapi uh, namespace. And it has a handler that will create our JSON spec. Uh, definition uh, and it will get uh, the uh, roots and uh, schemas for the input params and output responses from our code itself. So as you can see here uh, I have like a payments endpoint um, uh, like a scope here and after that I have like a just a slash uh, uh, path basically means payments slash and then inside here we have a get endpoint which will be basically a list of uh, payments uh, we have this summary here and we'll see how this translates into open spec api uh, definition um, later and i'm basically saying here that uh, params for this end endpoint could be just query param and we'll have just a limit uh, basically it means how much entities we'll get as the output uh, and we have some JSON schema defaults uh, set to 10 and then we say that this limit should be a number integer uh, and then for the responses we can define a body uh, schema and we can do that by type so let's say we have a successful uh, response 200 and then the body should follow the spec and we're using this Mali syntax here. Basically, we have a map and we say that inside our map, we should have a single uh, key called payments and it should be a sequential, which is basically like a list of vector. Uh, and each element will be a map and that map should contain ID, amount and currency. And currency should be uh, enum value, one of these three options. Uh, so that's for our get endpoint, and then we define our handler. Um, no logic here, we're just saying that we're handling this endpoint, we, we just return always the predefined uh, response, uh, just for simplicity. But obviously you'll um, build your logic here, your handler, uh, inside this function. So again, uh, following the rest, uh, way of defining things. We have a post endpoint on the same slash payments uh, root and for post we'll define a body 
parameters with a map uh, with a schema that basically we expect in the body request amount and currency and then for responses uh, we now have 201 for created and the um, output uh, format we expect a map having a payment key and inside a payment have a single payment entity with id amount and currency similar to what we had and as you can see we're now uh, starting repeating ourselves but uh, in real application you basically will just move this definition of the payment schema into some shared uh, schema and then you can reuse it uh, where it's uh, appropriate so again, uh, in the handler, simple logic, but now uh, we'll get our amount and currency destructured from the body uh, of the request, and we will just reuse them in the response with some uh, hard-coded ID. And the third uh, route is to get payment by ID. So now you can see we have this uh, ID path param defined. And again, it is part of our spec. So inside path, we say that we want ID integer and it will be automatically validated if we uh, call uh, the endpoint. For example, if we put something like string as part of our ID, it will be rejected by the middleware that checks the prompts. Um, so yeah. Uh, same idea, we have the responses map, we define the spec, and we have our handler with some hard-coded values here. So I guess that's it. Uh, let's try to run our application. So the survey is started. Let's go to our uh, localhost 8080. And uh, you can see if we go just to index HTML, uh, a Swagger embedded, entity, uh, embedded uh, resource is uh, shown. And it basically defined here, uh, create Swagger UI handler. And we're providing some URLs for the Swagger JSON and OpenAPI JSON. So if I go uh, and just call OpenAPI JSON, uh, we'll have our op OpenAPI spec generated by rated. And we can use that. Uh, and also here we can uh, switch between Swagger and OpenAPI if we want. Uh, so the next thing I want to show is if we just copy, like, first of all, let's try some requests. So let's say we want payments and we can just try it from uh, Swagger, uh, execute. And as you can see, we have uh, our response. So if I put a string here, I think we'll have an uh, exception. The value should be integer. And... Um, same for the post request. Uh, let's try that again, uh, that as well. Uh, amount zero, let's say 10 and execute. And we see our valid response. And uh, payment by ID. Again, let's try it. ID one, execute. And we see that we have our response with ID one from the path param. So next thing is we can copy our uh, OpenAPI spec. And if we go back and uh, just use it here. And let's do reformat code. We now have uh, our JSON OpenAPI spec. And what we can do with that, if I delete this client, we can call, uh, we can use a tool co uh, called Open uh, API Generator, and we can run this command basically saying uh, use this Open API spec and generate some closure code for us. And the output folder is client slash closure. If we run that, uh, we now have our client closure code generated. And if I go inside uh, client closure and run lane install it will uh, build the uber jar and install it into uh, my local m2 folder so i can check it here uh, m2 payment service payment service and we have our jar and now i can use it inside uh, my project clj 
uh, as a dependency right here as a, a payment service. And in the client namespace, I can use that generated code to call my API. And it's pretty cool, I think, uh, because now we have um, our client library generated from our spec, so it knows how to validate the input request and the output response, and uh, basically can reduce amount of code that we need to write in the client uh, on the client side. So let's give it a try. First of all, we need to set API context, and the only thing we need is to reset our base URL to uh, where our service is running. And after that, we can try uh, payment slash payment get and let's say one and we have this response and actually i think if i put something like string here we'll get an exception and we'll see our error that it's not um the body schema body is not uh, valid the limit field which is good and then, for example, here we can try this as well. So this is getting a payment by ID. And also we can try a post request as well. And you can see everything is working. And we don't have to write any code. Um, we don't have to do any JSON encoding, decoding. And we also have uh, validation so if we, for example, go inside our payment post method, let's go right here, uh, a bit annoying that it's all done by a custom macro, which is def and spec. Basically, uh, some, we have some problems with auto completion um, and we need to define these things uh, in tools like CLG Condo uh, that we have like custom uh, macro defined, but I think that's not a bigger problem, big problem. So as you can see, we have a lot of code generated. We have our specs uh, defined here. So you can see this is all coming from the open API JSON definition that we used to generate our code. And also uh, this open um, API generator is obviously not just for closure so we can do uh, like java uh, actually never try that or like we, we can try something like uh, changing output folder and saying that we want some java code and let's see if that works um, the only thing i need to do is i want to go to levels up and i can try that yeah, so it finished uh, and we now have a Java folder. We have a, our SRC for source code. And then uh, as you can see here, we have some Java code that, 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 that we can use as a client library. And uh, it supports a lot of languages. So if you want to generate JavaScript, TypeScript, clients, Go, uh, that's all possible with this auto generation. So this is cool. Uh, the other approach uh, is a different one. Uh, it is more closure specific. So there's a library called uh, Martian and the idea here is different. It's not generating the code ahead of time, but you can use something like a function called bootstrap a open API and passing the uh, URL to your open API JSON. And after that, uh, it basically will uh, dynamically create routes that you can call and you can use things like response for and then root name for in our case it will be something like payment get and um, it probably will work as well but again it's different approaches right in open api generator we are basically generating the client libraries and here it's more like a dynamic discovery uh, based on the spec um, yeah, um, that's all for today. In next video, I'll try to create some examples where we will uh, create uh, OpenAPI spec manually, and then we'll use uh, 
some validators to check that our implementation of the API is valid against the open API spec. So we kind of will switch their approach and we'll try the API or contract first approach for building APIs with open API spec. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as usual, uh, please like, subscribe and leave comments. That really helps the channel. And also there are links how you can support uh, my work and the channel. There's like a buy me a coffee page if you want to support me. And yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thanks a lot for viewing and see you next video. Bye bye.